Your next comedian is here all the way from Charlottesville. Please put your hands together for Mr. Joe Shea. What's up? Hey. Richmond, what's going on? I got good news. I'm moving here. Two months. Coming to Richmond. Clap, goddammit. Woo! <laughs> I, uh, no, I'm excited to come up here, man. I am. I'm tired of Charlottesville. Too small a town for me. The, uh, the differences were accentuated for me because I've been to traffic court in both Charlottesville and Richmond. And traffic court in Charlottesville is very boring. You get speeding tickets, you get DUIs. There's really no reason to be there. When I went to traffic court in Richmond, I was sitting there waiting for my case. And the very first person they called, Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson stands up. Mr. Johnson. You are charged with impersonating a fireman while driving under the influence. <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah! This is fun, man. I really, really wanted to know what caused both those crimes. Like, I'm just, they didn't tell the story, but I'm really hoping he just happened to be driving home drunk and got pulled over. Like, had a fireman's hat in the passenger seat and decided to give it a shot. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, officer, it's cool. Officer, I just, you know, this helps me be relaxed when I gotta go save people. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit tonight. I'll tell you about racism real quick. This is a girl who I work with who's really accidentally racist, which is by far the best kind. I can totally handle that. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> we had some reggae playing, and this, this heavyset black dude came into the lobby. He's waiting for his food, so he's just kind of swaying. You know, he's doing his thing a little bit. And she comes up to me, she says, hey, doesn't that guy look just like Baloo the Bear from the Jungle Book? <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> I asked her, I was like, all right, let's talk about it. What percentage of black men look like bears to you? <laughs> she says, no, no, it's only when they dance. I was like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta help me out here. So I, you know, I acted all pissed off. I was gonna mess with her a little bit. And she, she realized that what she said was not okay. So she, you know, she kind of walked away all embarrassed. I kept walking behind her. I mean, the bare necessity. She did not think that was funny. <laughs> I had a great day at work, though. That was funny. I, uh, I look black, but I guess I don't act very black. Because, like, where I'm from, I don't get treated black. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't make white people uncomfortable. I don't know what it is about this that doesn't make white people nervous. And it's wonderful that they're so progressive. But I get a little jealous. <laughs> like, I'm walking down the street at midnight and a white girl passes me. Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, fuck. Doesn't move her purse or anything? Like, making some assumptions with your safety here, sunshine. I, yes, white dockers, okay, I get it. But <laughs> work with me a little bit. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. It's an open mic. I, uh... Then when you guys might have seen this picture, it's going around Facebook. It's like an anti-discrimination thing. What it is, is it's a bunch of skeletons lined up left to right. Identical skeletons. And under each one, it has a label. And it's kind of cool, because it, like, it show, you know, it'll say like black, white, rich, poor, religious, atheist, human. Like they're all the same. It's all the same when you take away all the, the skin and the muscle. We're all the same. Except midgets. I think the point of that picture is fuck midgets, because they have different bone structures. I don't like people with different bone structures, goddammit. <laughs> alright, alright. We're trying stuff. We're trying stuff. I'm having an uh, issue with my roommate. It's not, really, it's not really his fault, it's just there's, there's problems that I didn't anticipate about having roommates. Like when I shave, wash my face, towel off, I accidentally happen to use my roommate's towel. Doesn't sound like a problem, except now I have to hold it up to make sure that that's not where his dick goes. I have to call him in and have him show me how he uses his towel. Maybe you guys are more comfortable with dick-to-face towel interactions than I am. But I don't want to shave, wash my face, and then still have a beard. Alright? That's so good for me. And I got the light. I gotta get out of here. Thanks, guys. Okay, so what did he say about discriminating against short people now? <laughs> Your next comedian coming to the stage. Also very tall. Please welcome to the stage, Travis Paul. Hey, 
Thank you. Thank you. Give it up for your host. Oh my, she's great. And thanks for not butchering my name like I did on Sunday with your name. <laughs> I still feel bad about that. Uh, hey, I recently got my wisdom teeth pulled. Uh, you guys had that done? Yeah. The only good thing I can say about it is afterwards they give you Vicodin. <laughs> which is fun. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the label on a bottle of Vicodin, but it has a warning on it. And the warning reads, verbatim, warning, alcohol may increase effect. Which I don't know about you people, but where I come from, that's a recommendation. <laughs> that warning label should end in the phrase, what are you, a pussy? <laughs> it's practically a dick. Um, I just got back from British Columbia, Canada. No? no. Alright. <laughs> Fuck Canada. I don't like them either. Uh, I really don't. I don't like British Columbia, although uh, it's an awesome city and I love the people and the culture, but uh, fuck British Columbia, because it has a stupid name, British Columbia. All you've done is taken two unrelated countries and smashed them together to make a new name for something. That'd be like if we had a state called French Mexico. <laughs> stupid. Uh, <laughs> speaking of trips, uh, <laughs> I got back from Florida. I drove to Fort Lauderdale, Florida with my dad, which was stupid. Um, he's got a new GPS that he's obsessed with, which is fine, except he's got audible updates every 10 minutes to tell you where you're going, which is all right, except for here, here's the directions from here to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Get on I-95, drive south, when you get to Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> stop. <laughs> so now, every 10 minutes, I hear, continue on I-95 South for next 800 miles. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, continue on I-95 South for next 780 miles for 16 hours. <laughs> so that sucked. And then we get to Fort Lauderdale, and we, we're staying in a, in a hotel, and it may be the shittiest hotel I've ever been to. Uh, you know how you can tell the difference between a okay hotel and a shitty hotel? Hallways. Hallways. Nice hotels have hallways. Shitty hotels, your door just opens to a parking lot. Uh, here's, a, here's a hint. If you have to pass your car on your way from your room to the lobby, that's a shitty hotel. <laughs> anyway, the first night I'm at this hotel, uh, it's about four in the morning, I'm sound asleep when I hear what I think are rocks hitting the outside of my window. Now, uh, I get up to investigate, I put that little chain on the door, and I look out, and uh, from what I can piece together, the guy in the room next to me had picked up a hooker who was conveniently located right in front of the hotel. <laughs> did what you do with a hooker, and then tried to pay her with a big bag full of assorted change. <laughs> and she was not having it. She was just cursing in Spanish and flipping nickels, man. And they were bouncing off my window and uh, waking me up. And look, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to say you shouldn't get a hooker. But uh, hey, if you're gonna get a hooker, maybe hit a coin star first. <laughs> It's called class, people, and I have it. Uh, sadly, that is not the most depraved my trip to Fort Lauderdale got. Um, I was there about two months, and at one point, we decided, hey, let's go to a strip club. Me and a bunch of coworkers, let's go to a strip club. Well, there are two kinds of strip clubs in Florida. There's, a, uh, there's fairly classy topless bars that have a cover charge and a dress code, and they serve alcohol. And then there's fully nude bars that don't serve alcohol. Uh, there's still a cover charge, but dudes show up wearing like sweatpants. <laughs> so uh, guess which one we went to? Sweatpants. The latter. So we're there, and we're there about an hour. I'm not really into strip clothes. I'm just kind of drinking $9 cocktails. But uh, a particular coworker is getting a lap dance. Let's call him Jeff for this story. Jeff's getting a lap dance, and he's got the, the, the stripper's feet over his shoulders and her ass is in his face, but Jeff's not looking at the stripper, he's staring off into space. And he starts doing this. 
and then Jeff throws up on the stripper's ass. <laughs> so we just start throwing 20s and back out of the club, and uh, we get in the car, and Jeff is just distraught. He's practically in tears. He's so embarrassed. And I go, dude, you need to look on the bright side. You probably turned that chick's life around. She <laughs> probably quit stripping, stopped doing coke, called her kids, and enrolled in night school. All because you wanted to look at a meth ed squad. I think that's beautiful. All right, that's it for me, thanks. <laughs> Give it up for Travis Carl, everybody. You guys are not very good at that. Give it up for Travis Carl, everybody. Your next comedian, also all the way here from Norfolk, please welcome to the stage, Rebus Barso. So I'm going to start with some bad news. <laughs> uh, a month ago, one of my favorite artists of all time passed away, uh, MCA from the Beast Boys. And uh, he died from uh, cancer on a salivary gland, which is really sad to find out because he was so young. But then thinking about it, it's kind of like the dopest way ever to die as a rapper because you die spitting cancer. <laughs> Everybody knows that cancer beats fire. <laughs> so I was uh, watching E.T. the other day, and there's a part where E.T. touches a dead plant and it comes back to life. And all I was like, I think it'd be like, man, this would be awesome to smoke weed with E.T. Because <laughs> I like to recycle. You got a little vaporizer finger, like Alliant. Alliant. Puff, puff, give. <laughs> Anyway, I still think that's hands down Lil Wayne's best role ever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, uh, I don't know. I'm ambiguous looking. And uh, I grew up in California, so I used to get mistaken for a Mexican. But then I moved to Virginia and I got identified as a terrorist. <laughs> so I'm moving up. <laughs> but I'm actually Romanian. Uh, it's famous for all things creepy like werewolves and vampires. In gymnastics. <laughs> I can't even do a cartwheel though. Um, but I used to get joked on a lot when I was younger because the people would say, oh you're a vampire because I was from Romanian. Um, and I'd have to remind them that I was a quarter Jewish and everybody knows that Jews can only be werewolves <laughs> because we're hairy. So, I don't know. I've recently become proud to be Romanian though because they're finally number one at something human trafficking, uh, or white slavery, um, I'm just kidding, uh, no, they're really good at it, uh, I've actually been sent here and started ducking white families with my comedy, uh, going okay, uh, I'm just kidding, I'm not in the white slavery game, I can never compete with Visa, so. <laughs> So other than that, uh, there's another like Romanian tradition I like to take part in, and that's uh, eating elderly people. Uh, <laughs> and that's the way I gain the wisdom of my peasant ancestors. Uh, but I have to put this out there. Old people are getting salty as shit. <laughs> and like anything, moderation is key, especially with aged meats, because sodium is a killer. So other than that, I'm pretty normal, just like you guys. I love people watching in parking garages. And uh, there's a little game I like to play is whenever I see a girl walking down a row of cars, I like to go, Get in the van! Get in the van! <laughs> and it's uh, really funny from further away. <laughs> it's a little more intense. But I learned something that night. You can measure creepiness, and it's in feet. <laughs> uh, I don't know, speaking of creepy things, Chinese food buffets. Uh, <laughs> I call them food casinos, because no matter what you pick, you lose. <laughs> and uh, you always leave feeling dirty. So, he likes it. Okay. Um, but I don't know, one place I do like a lot though, and they have great food, is Wawa. Alright, I guess they have Wawa's in Richmond. 
Uh, but the thing is, uh, I want to work there, and I just don't have a job opening yet that I want, and that's to be a Wawa door greeter. <laughs> because I like to make dubstep beats, and I can already see it right now. It's like, welcome to Wawa, ma'am. Welcome to Wawa, sir. Welcome to Wawa, 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 you're welcome. <laughs> One thing I don't like about it, though, is that in front of the Wawa sometimes there's people asking for money, and I'll put it right out there right now. I am homophobic. Um, I'm scared of hobos. But I found a good way to deal with them is to give them a polite no hobo. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, McCord. You guys are awesome. Everybody give it up for Remus. And if you guys gave him a thumbs up, give it up for them too.